Hello there, fellow sojourners, and welcome back to another edition of Appropriating the Culture. Today's episode and the next few episodes will be a little bit different as I'm going to be taking off for a few weeks. Sad, I know. But at ATC, we've always stressed the importance of cultural engagement. This is not just about analyzing or criticizing the culture. It's about creating a movement of Christian advancement in the culture, particularly in media. And so to that end, this month I am finishing up a new novel. We are plunging in earnest into pre-production on a feature film, and I am launching a new fiction podcast. With all of that and my other responsibilities, something had to give. Does this mean, then, that you'll be plunged into darkness, deprived of that sweet, sweet ATC content for weeks? Not quite. During my schooling, I had to write a paper on the authority of Scripture, and like most people of my generation, I asked the teacher, can I do a video? And the fool said yes. So please to enjoy this multi-part series on the authority of Scripture. If there was a person who was morally absolutely perfect, so perfect that they would never ever lie, in fact, could never lie, like ever, is ontologically incapable of lying, would you consider what that person said to be trustworthy? Well, if you said no, you have some serious trust issues and you probably need some psychological counseling, which is unfortunately beyond the scope of this video. But for the rest of us, obviously, we would trust someone that morally trustworthy. Now, just because they're honest doesn't mean they can't be wrong. They can be honest and simply mistaken. So let's say that if there were such a perfect moral person, that in addition to being perfect, this person knew everything, like literally everything. Would you consider what that person said to be more trustworthy than any other source in existence, as trustworthy as any other source in existence, or less trustworthy than any other source in existence? The correct answer is A. Obviously. Now, just for kicks, let's also say that this all-knowing being who is always honest also has all the power in the universe, like he has an infinity gauntlet on each hand. Plus, he's the one who made the Infinity Stones. That kind of power. Well, what I've described is a classical philosophical understanding of what we mean by God, plus Marvel. A being that is omniscient, who knows everything, who is omnipotent, that is all-powerful, and who is good incarnate, that is, God is morally perfect. He is the moral standard. He is the grounding for objective morality. He's morally perfect, and he knows everything, and he has the power to communicate. Well, the Christian claim is that the Bible is the inspired Word of God, so the Bible has supreme authority because its transmission and compilation were divinely orchestrated by God himself, who knows everything and doesn't lie. So if God inspired these words, then we have the most trustworthy and authoritative source in the entire universe. Sidebar. I say if, because at some point everything becomes a matter of faith, even our own existence is not with absolute certainty, let alone God's existence. But if God does exist, and we have compelling logical, philosophical, and scientific reasons for believing that he exists, then it seems reasonable to believe that he would perhaps want to communicate to his creation, especially given his moral character. And we have several known texts that claim to be the word of God that are worth exploring. Out of those texts, I find the Bible has the strongest claim because it's the document that best corresponds with reality. That is, what the Bible says about the world, what it says about mankind, what it says about God, what it says about the problem of the world makes sense. It matches up with our observations. It best corresponds with reality, which is a good definition for truth. And when you couple that with the historicity and reliability of scripture, the fact that everything we can corroborate has been corroborated and found to be accurate, that leads you to think that the Bible has authority. The Bible has been proven right and reliable in every claim that we can corroborate. It's been proven right about dates and events and names and political figures and geography and architecture, local customs, traditions, topography, weather patterns, sailing techniques, language. Basically, 
basically in every way that we have been able to verify we have found it to be reliable and trustworthy which is exactly what we would expect if it were inspired by God and although the Bible is a collection of books spanning over a thousand years and written by many people from all walks of life from kings prophets noblemen to shepherds and fishermen from the highly educated to the ill-educated we have ultimately through all of that a cohesive coherent singular worldview as if its source were transcendent now ultimately the Bible is self-attesting and the best way to judge whether the Bible is the Word of God is to read it for yourself and if you approach it with openness read it and then conclude that its authorship is merely human and it's just a bunch of nonsense from top to bottom fine Godspeed but what this video really seeks to correct is the notion that the Bible is the Word of God but doesn't have authority or the idea that it's partially the Word of God and partially not the Word of God authoritative in some areas but mistaken in others that is to suggest that our omnipotent being was incapable of transmitting his message as he intended which is a position that seems rather untenable now you'll notice that we say the Bible is the inspired Word of God because we're acknowledging human involvement. Real flesh and blood human beings wrote down these words. Real human beings compiled these books and real human beings are involved in the various translations of these inspired texts. We're not talking about dictation. God did not dictate the Bible and the authors are not stenographers. God inspired them. He used all of their humanness, their voices, their history, their psychology, their interests, their their thought patterns, their grammar style, and their word choices to communicate his words to us in the exact way he intended them. Human involvement might make it seem less authoritative to you because it might seem less reliable. Humans are flawed after all. But the truth is human involvement actually increases its reliability and gives us greater assurance of its authority. Here's what I mean by that. Uh, let's say I'm telling you something about Jesus. I say Jesus was blonde haired and blue eyed and over here is the Apostle John High John and he's telling you no 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 this is what Jesus was actually like. Well who's more reliable? Who has more authority? Well John does, obviously. He was an eyewitness, I wasn't. He spent years with Jesus. He physically saw and touched him. What he says about Jesus is going to have greater weight to it. There's an authority and a reliability there. There's an eyewitness. But let's suppose that we discover a new text find it in the dirt somewhere, and it claims to be from John. Well, how do we know it's actually from John? How do we know it's authentic and not a forgery? Well, aside from carbon dating or other dating tools, scholars can look at the writing style, the grammar, the word choices, and they'll go, you know, this really doesn't sound like John. He doesn't write like that. See, the human element helps make authorship identifiable. It shields us from forgeries and lies and gives us greater reliability in the authority of the sources. Strangely enough, God's use of real human beings helps us distinguish his words from other words. He uses our humanness to perfectly transmit his message, which brings us to inerrancy. Well, I hope you enjoy that. Next week, we'll be talking about the inerrancy of scripture, so be sure to tune into that. As a reminder, at the end of August, ATC will be separated from the social media accounts of TCC. So, if you have not done so, subscribe to the Appropriate in the Culture YouTube now. All of the videos have been transferred over to that channel. Join my author's Facebook page, because come September, that's where these videos will be dropping on Facebook. Appropriate in the Culture is also coming to all the various podcasting mediums, Apple, Google, Amazon, Spotify, Pandora. Search, and you will find it there, and if it's not there, it will be there shortly. We also have an Instagram account, appropriate in the culture, all one word. Follow me and I'll follow you back. And as always, like, review, leave a comment, and stay tuned here for more appropriate in the culture. Mm -hmm.